He was a bit of a d wasn't he? Uh, he was, yeah. He was he, he, not more than a bit of, yeah. He quite fancied himself, didn't he? Didn't he? Whoa, did he? Did he, mate? Wow. <laughs> nah, he's the definition of chocolate, mate. <laughs> we finish training, come inside, and we all have to sit around and watch Coach Carter for like two hours or however long it is. He says, This is what I'm like as a manager. <laughs> This is the Fort Hole Challenge and we're down here at North Manchester Golf Club and I've been joined by Oh Nader Manu. <laughs> I love oh, that. how are we? Yeah, I'm very good, mate. Very good, good mate. How are you? No, great, mate. Thank you so much for doing this. Good to see you up north, mate. I know. We and the skies are blue as well. Unbelievable. Did you bring this? <laughs> yeah. From yeah. The, I'm I appreciate on the way up here, it was snowing. Yeah, to be fair, there was a bit of snow here as well. Yeah. But the sun's out now. But Happy yeah, days. It's come out for us and here we go. Exactly. What's your handicap, mate? Uh, it's similar to yours. Yeah? Yeah. 16? Yeah, let's call it that, yeah. <laughs> All right. So we're, we're equal. I don't, I don't hand in cards, so I don't have a handicap. Fair I just enough. like to enjoy the game. Fair enough. Mm. Let's do it. Yeah. Four! Naden to throw first. Oh, well, it's uh, that's come out, isn't it? No, nah, it's probably not. But you know, it's forward. <laughs> forward is forward is good. Forward is good. Go life. It's the only life we know. Exactly. Every time I see water, I absolutely break. Listen, it. it sucks the ball in, you know. Right. Left is best. Left is social. You should think about it. Come on, here we go. Oh. oh, it's a cracker. <laughs> it's a cracker. Get down there, boy. Look at it go. Keep rolling. <laughs> keep, keep rolling. <laughs> Four hour drive and a zinger burger straight down the middle. Come on. Didn't know it was one of those challenges, mate. <laughs> Naden, thanks so much again for joining me on the Four Hour Challenge. Um, how long have you been playing golf for and who got you into it? Um, so I started probably 10 years ago and it was my father-in-law that started me off yeah and i'm not great now but i was a disaster back then and for probably the first two three years he used to just take me out just to humiliate me basically <laughs> nice but you know it's one of those games where you can get better if you invest some time into it so i did get better and now for the last three four years i've been dominating him so it's, it's, it's <laughs> yes. payback isn't it right back at you exactly right back at you but yeah he was uh he was the person who got me involved in like since then, it's just, it's just been so much fun, to be fair. It's just a great game, isn't it? Great game. It's one of those as well, you can't master it. Nah. You know what I mean? So if you try and do that, you, you'll end up losing, but you can enjoy it. You can be out with your friends. You can be hitting good shots, bad shots, but whatever happens, you take the memories with you. So it's a great sport. Absolutely. Being retired about six months now, is it? Yes. Are you missing it? No. <laughs> no, absolutely not, no. I think the fact that in this moment now, there are no fans and things like that, there's nothing there which I see, which I want to be a part of. Right. Because that, playing with no fans really does miss a lot. And then also, I kind of enjoy my free time. Yeah, yeah. Obviously doing things like golf and stuff during the day. It's and not golf something. with me, yeah? yeah? Yeah, of course. I had to retire to be able to do this. <laughs> but yeah, as I was saying, I, I played my part. I enjoyed it, M made a difference wherever I was. But, you know, I'm excited to start the rest of my life and move on from what came before. Love that, right. Talking about making a difference, your ball did pop out. Yeah, it did actually. Yeah, here we go. Pressure's on. What you got? Uh, I'm, I've got a pitching wedge, but I'm guessing, I'm guessing the distance. Time will tell if it's right or not. Oh, oh it's oh. massive and it's left. Oh. Who knows, oh. by the time I get up there, it might be by the flag. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. It's all right. That's fine. Oh, it stopped short. Yeah, it did. Yeah. I was going to go straight into the Lewis, the old <laughs> Lewis bunk. <laughs> oh, he's got he's got a rhyme for everything. We've got him. And I've got a lot of time for it. So you you finished your career mm -hmm. in uh, the MLS with Real Salt Lake. Yes. What was the MLS like? Um, it's very different to football in England and probably around the rest of Europe and so on because. A lot of the clubs are essentially brand new. Yeah. So they do have fan bases and stuff, but they don't have that history, that heritage, that generation's worth of support and things like that. And I think you can sort of sense that in the way that 
the game isn't life or death. Yeah. You know, the things which are rivalries are theoretical rivalries as opposed to say being in the city of Manchester, Red V Blue or say like Manchester versus Liverpool. You don't have stuff like that. Right. So it's not I wouldn't say it's not as serious, but it doesn't seem to have the same sort of consequences where everything matters and even over there as well. News coverage in England, football's the number one topic. Right. Over there, you'll do well to see it on national TV. And Serious? They all, it's not a thing. They've got college football, college basketball, pro football, pro basketball, I'm talking about American football. Yeah, yeah. College lacrosse, then college soccer, and then we start to arrive. And it's just the way that it is, unfortunately. But you say, you talk about that, you mentioned the media there. Like when I, I went out there, I was lucky enough to go out there and do like a sort of documentary for Sky. But haven't they got some weird rule? Like with the media, you've got like ten minutes to get ready. Yeah. In and the change room, and they, come and they, in, they yeah. all just come flying in. Flying in. I, I literally, they all went outside the door. And I was like, what's going on here? <laughs> They've all after ten minutes, they've gone do 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 bang. I, I, and there's that there's, there's things out that everyone's got. To, to talk about that. Yeah. My seat was right next to said door. Yeah. So regularly, I'd just be walking out from Sharon, whatever, take a seat, and the next thing I'm just watching, just people just just rushing by. I'm like, oh, you guys all right? Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it's, it's they, they do things differently. Our football over there, they try and base it around, say, the other American sports. When you talk about drafts and going through college and all that, yeah. that doesn't work for for like football, football. But they've tried to adapt their American model to football, and as a consequence, it's a it's a bit different. Right. So if you go over there, don't expect the same things because you won't get it. Right. Yeah. Fair enough. You talk about rivalries as well. You had an absolute bust up, didn't you? With one of the greatest footballers ever yeah. potentially Slatan uh -huh. Ibrahimovic he was a bit of a d wasn't he uh, he was yeah he was he, he, not more than a bit of yeah um, and again this is something about the MLS so the league itself feels at times like it's propped up by its stars because that's who they want to talk about yeah. but it means that each club doesn't really have the identity that it deserves so when he leaves LA Galaxy fewer eyes are on LA Galaxy but more eyes are on him going wherever he's gone right so he, for the years he was there, he obviously scored goals and so on and brought attention, but he also said some things which were disrespectful to everybody else that was in the league because of the fact of the matter is, he, for as great as he was, I'm on the same field as him. Yeah. This guy who came from college is on the same field as him. Yeah. So you should respect each other because you're all in that at the same time. But something happened in the game which meant that for the next like 45 minutes we were like at each other's throats or whatever on the field. He scored day one, and then after the game, I'm like furious and whatever, because we lost the game. Yeah. And then uh, we've been in the dressing room probably two minutes, and then he just walked in, walked past our like, security, walked past most of our players, and started coming to me saying, oh, have you calmed down yet? But like, I'm thinking, is this guy mucking me off? <laughs> like, wh like, what do you mean? Because I don't know him, yeah. so it's not funny. So I um, politely told him to uh, please leave the... <laughs> the area in a very polite manner as you'll see in the video like yeah, this, yeah, yeah, an angry yeah. face doesn't mean i'm not being polite <laughs> i think you were telling him to yeah exactly oh. i was i kind of stepped to him and to be fair in that moment i think i gained a lot of respect from my teammates because they understood that even though the league feels one way i feel another yeah and i think they grasped as well in that point that we are together against the opposition it doesn't matter whether it's the best player in the world or somebody who's just come through college like this is our team and this is where the fight is and that's like say for me why in england for as good as say Man City are doing, yeah. if they play a team that's in the fourth tier, the fourth tier are going to try and kick Man City. Yeah, yeah. Because they respect them and they love them, but they're going to try and kick them. Whereas in the MLS, it doesn't really feel like that. They feel like even the players want to protect the stars, and I'm like, nah. <laughs> it's not having it. Not, but not wasn't he bit. like saying stuff in your ear? Like, yeah, he was saying all sorts. But uh, to be fair, in the game, I was giving, I was giving it back as well. Like it, it turned out to be quite a fun game because, yeah. like, coming from playing in England, like that's just a regular Saturday. Yeah. You know what I mean? But over there, it's like, oh. The controversy, oh! <laughs> and then to add to it again, when we played against each other the next time, like it was just water, water off a duck's back. Yes. Like that's just, that's football. It's competitive and that's the way it should be. Fair enough. And listen, I personally don't like him no. in terms of some of the stuff he says, but his goal record and all that stuff speaks for itself. It's exceptional. I'm not in the same tier as him, nowhere near it. But when it comes down to playing against whoever, if we're yeah. on the same field, we both deserve to be there. So you're going to get the full treatment. So get ready for it. Right. Oh. oh, hold the finish. He's out. Yeah, well He's out. out. Oh, well out. He's out. He's, I'm a bit rusty. <laughs> Sorry, I'll chip this in though. Bear with. Come on, Naden. I got this, mate. I got this. And I told you first, I was free anyway. 
Oh. Where's oh, that stop, going? Stop. Hold on a sec. <laughs> Keep rolling, rolling, rolling. <laughs> well, rolling. I swear I was going over there. <laughs> oh, he's giving me a chance. Giving you a great chance. Looking at the greens, yours was absolutely rapid. No, it's the wind. All right, here we go. Oh, stop, 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 stop. <laughs> stop, stop, stop. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Too much beef. Oh, this is what the people came to see. <laughs> this is proper This gold. is electric. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs Masters Week when you've got this? Exactly, yeah, exactly. Or I'll make that you. Hang on. Oh! A bit of meat on that bone. <sighs> right, here Just we go. Just roll this in so I can pick my ball up and say I got a double, please. Right. This is for an Allen Parr. Oh! Bogey. He's giving it to me. I think that's it, isn't it? Yes, yeah, it is. Choose one double, up yeah. on the four old challenge. <laughs> I'll, take, I'll take a double. <laughs> I'll take a double. After three months off, I'll take a double. Right, I start with a bogey. I'm quite happy with that. <laughs> it's, an, it's enough for a lead, so. I'll take that. I'll take it. It's one up. <laughs> right, here we go. Green pole, we're coming for you. Oh. oh my goodness, I did not come to play against that. I did not come to play against that. Hold the pose, I did Nathan. not come Hold to play against that. Pose. No, no thank you. No thank you. Well, I've never hit two in a row like that. <laughs> yeah, of course you haven't. <laughs> Those ones there. Eh? Oh my God, I can't believe how good I am. Wow. This, is, this is so unexpected. The people know the people viewing this though know I'm telling the truth. So right. I've never actually hit two in a row like that. Oh my god. Oh, settle. Absolute settle. Singer dinner. settle. 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 Is that a good one? Yeah. yeah. The locals know. Hey, say no more. <laughs> so Nadim, your career yes. started at a young age. Yes. At your beloved Man City. Correct, yeah. What was Man City like back in the day? Because we all know it now is a multi-million pound well, training ground, unbelievable. Oh, City always, they always had the fan base. Main Road was incredible. I had some okay moments in the Premier League, but like some people forget, I think it was 99 when it was the Division 2 playoff final. And they only won in the last, well, they only scored in the last minute to even take it to extra time and so on. Yeah. So the club could have been in a very different place. But it was, uh, let's just say money makes a big difference. But in fairness to the club, they didn't just invest in the players, they invested in the training ground, the staff, they invested in the city itself. And it made a big difference yeah. to the club and the space overall. But back then, aspirations, you know, my first season we finished, I think, ninth. The next season we just about avoided relegation. The next season after that, there's talk that the club's going to go bust because the owner's got no money. Gee. The next owner, he's, he's in prison, he's got his, all his assets frozen, so he's a little bit chaotic, but, you know, it got, it got better. And I was very lucky to see when, um, when the shake came in, yeah. see the change in the club then. And yeah, when they were saying, you know, we're going to try and win the league and try and do this, I was like, Really? I was like, okay, guys. Because I think around the same sort of times, you're looking at like Venkies and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, okay, we'll see how that goes. But the talent came in, the management came in, the change of mentality came in. And before you know it, they were achieving everything. Unbelievable. So credit to them, yeah, credit to them. And you, you, you mentioned the management there. Uh, it was your mate, Roberto Mancini. Wasn't oh, it? we were so tight. <laughs> Me and Roberto, we were so tight, mate, honestly. No, he, uh, this is the thing. So, I think I was lucky in my career to get on with most of the managers, which I, which who coached me. Yeah. But it's not an expectation, you know. As I say, it's just fortunate. But with him, I, I personally don't think he had much of a personality towards players. I think maybe one or two people had a thing with him, but most of the players didn't. Most of the staff didn't. That he didn't bring in himself. And that's just, I don't know, that's just who he is. But the fact is, like, he was successful. You train the team in a particular way. 
it was abundantly clear the moment you walked into the training ground what was requ required of you. Yeah. Same when you went on the field because you did it every single day right. without fail. So I didn't like him as a person, but he was successful. So as a player, you just, you know, you, as I say, you're lucky to like your boss. You shouldn't expect it, but he wasn't. I think if he had more about him, I think he would have stayed there for longer, but he didn't. And it got to a point where I think play, it was either players choosing to leave or him going and in the end he went so yeah but it's like you were there like you know as a youngster and, th and then he just came in and just what put you with the kids because you're good mates with yeah. Wayne Bridge aren't you yeah me Wayne, and Bridget Wayne Bridge is quite more he's quite more vocal about it than you but he, he was just like it was disgraceful the way he treated people yeah I think to be fair if I didn't have my links to the city I'd probably be more honest about everything yeah but like I don't want to throw too much mud onto a successful period of the club and Absolutely. make you know what i mean yeah and the stuff that me bridging other people were going through like is it was horrendous it was absolutely horrendous but yeah you didn't need to do it you didn't need to do it because yeah. i remember speaking to patrick Vieira at, at city at that time and he said one thing about say the old style jose Mourinho was one season he told him that it wasn't going to be part of his plans for the season but he still allowed him to play in pre-season and then when the season started, he did so well in pre-season that he started the season. Right. But for myself, Bridgie, Adebayor, Bellamy, uh, Santa Cruz, maybe Tevez at this point as well, weren't allowed to train with the team. Weren't even allowed to be at the, the, in the training ground at the same time as the team. And you wonder, like, what's that for? Because we didn't do anything wrong. But as a consequence, he's bringing in younger players to be in the first team squad, which is good for their theoretical progression yeah. but sure that lowers the standard of training because now you've got seasoned professionals who are on the outside and you're bringing in people who are tasting it for the first time so it's almost like at times they cut off the nails to spite their face because even if we're going to leave like we'll leave yeah but at least allow us to train with those people because we weren't disruptive but when as soon as you start being put in different dressing rooms coming in at different type training times like you're basically left in a position where you ask yourself like why am i why am i doing this and Bridgie found it tough because he was based down south essentially and, and for me i was uh because i was a city boy or whatever i was just stunned i didn't know what to make of it and overall i think it's probably the toughest toughest six no i'd say a year of my career because yeah. at that time i was still relatively young tw looking at 24 25 and i didn't have a clue what was going on didn't have a clue that's poor that it's poor. but that's that's management that's football like unfortunately like i think the good the good people in football make a difference yeah but only if they're in positions of power and i think at times some of the people who have power they're more so just concerned about other things they don't really care about the players overall yeah. but that's just the way football is i guess and he quite fancied himself didn't he didn't he whoa did he did he mate wow <laughs> now he's the definition of chocolate mate <laughs> but uh, he's yeah, he was different. His culture was different. The way he carried himself, the way he ate everything. Like, this is, no, you can't eat this. You must eat that. You can't do this. You have to do that. Even the stuff like in training, he'll say, I want you to do this. And then you don't do it right. It's just, oh, it's just, just like this. You can't just go. <laughs> and to be fair, he'd always do it. <laughs> he'll be like, oh, okay, can't really argue with it. Yeah. But it doesn't really, you know, it makes it, he, he appears, he treats everything like it should. It's just incredibly easy to do. Right. And then he has to do it once, he manages to do it. But I'll tell you what, the most fun I had was when he'd get involved in the five sides when I was training with the first team. <laughs> get up there! Get a few but of those. Didn't he put a hair dryers in the... Uh... Yeah, that's essential, you know what I mean? He's trying to get B-days and hair dryers and stuff into the training ground as soon as he arrived and, you know... Listen, you're, you're the man in charge, but it's, um, it's a different flex, to say the least. Wow, interesting. Right, I'll give you a yardage, yeah? Right. Soft pitching wish? For a man of your caliber. <laughs> caliber. I've got five iron in me in me mitts. To be fair, I just play like a par five, I guess. It's a long par four, isn't it? Yeah. Now course management would say play it like a par five, but I've got a, I've got a Yeah, go for it, yeah. Go for it. What's, yeah. the worst, what's the worst that could happen? No pain, no game, Nadam. Exactly. Here my we friend. go. Exactly. Come on. Oh, you're never a 16 handicap. I hate people like you. <laughs> Another one else, you'd be on the green, mate. <laughs> people like you are the worst. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> oh, I'm 16, 18. <laughs> Shut up. This wind's doing absolutely nothing for my thought right process there. here. Oh. Ah! 
Oh. Oh, he's got the lefts today. He's got the lefts. That is left. That is left left. That is lefty loose. That is left of left. I think that's in Liverpool. Talking about our pal Wayne Bridge. Yes. <laughs> Didn't he once ask you to injure him in training? That he did. That he did. Was, did he tell you on this show? Huh? Did he, t did he first tell you that on this show or was it somewhere else? No, I, I spoke to him yesterday. He, yeah. he goes, he goes, he just texts back, he went, not much on Aiden, he's just the nicest man ever. Uh, <laughs> I love him. But ask him about when I asked him to uh, injure me in training, I was like, what? Yeah. I should have asked him. Yeah, so, like I said, it was a, it was a tough time under Mancini when we were training at three o'clock of under 16s. Yeah. So, uh, Bridgie had created a, he had a, he had a social calendar which he had to, you know, be up to. Whether it was potentially snowboarding, you know, being down in Surrey and stuff, even though we were playing in Manchester. And I think he might have hurt himself or whatever. So he, he asked me the question. And at that point, we're in the trenches together. So I was like, yeah, no problem. So I left a tiny bit on him. You know what I mean? And he, he, escaped, um, he escaped the situation. Everyone was trying to worry about him because maybe he got hurt on the training pitch, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't there. <laughs> what? So he literally came and went, training today, can you uh, just give yeah, me one? Essentially, yeah, essentially, yeah. Because like, I think he'd hurt himself from doing something which maybe he shouldn't have been doing. Yeah. Maybe, perhaps, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I forget, it's such a long time yeah. ago. But yeah, at that point, you know, we, in the bomb squad, we had- <laughs> the bomb in the, squad. In the, in the dead wood. Like we yeah. had nothing, we had nothing going for us or whatever. And we were just looking out for each other because it was a tough situation to be in. Yeah, you know, right, every day right. was- Mentally it must have been. Yeah, yeah. it's thinking like, <laughs> I remember, while they were playing in America in pre-season, we were playing like local, lower, like not even conference North teams and stuff around there, as I say, with the 16s and stuff. And you know, like, you're wondering to yourself like, What's happening? Yeah. And then when we were training, same time as the first team, and I said, nah, forget that. You guys aren't coming in until three. And the reason for three is because all the first team leaves by two. So when that stuff's going on, you know, you, yes. you find ways to manage. And to be fair, Bridgie was, he was certainly <laughs> occupying himself with other things. And yeah, so I, would, I, would, I didn't hurt him. No. But you know, at times, you know, the pitch can be, be a bit unstable at times. Yeah, just what I know. So I went in to try and win the ball, and you know, unfortunately, I think he may have rolled his ankle. <laughs> but you know, it's just one of those tough times in football, I guess. <laughs> Overcoming adversity. <laughs> Come on. Uh, I can't, I can't, um, I'm not here for this. You carry on, you finish this off, I'm going. I'm going on, mate. He's having a Fernando Torrid. <laughs> no, I'm going on, I'm going on. Yeah, this is where I'll duff it. Ah! All right, pal. <laughs> <laughs> Made him, yeah. Are we on the next tee yet or what? What's going on? Uh, yeah. This is, uh, this is, uh, this is getting out of hand. Oh, here it is. Look, I put yes. it on the tee box. You can I put, put it, it on the tee box because I wanted a flat lie. Lovely. I wanted a flat lie to just duff this now. Stick it in. Yeah. Come on. Of course. Oh. Yes, get up. Oh God, I'm having a disaster. <laughs> I'm having a disaster. <laughs> Look at the face. I'm a disaster. Oh. I'm fatting, thinning, topping. <laughs> Hooking, slicing, getting value. Check this in for buyer. Yeah? Come on. For this bogey. is for five, isn't it? Yeah, this is for bogey, isn't it? I thought it was Come on. Jurgen flop. Here he is. Gonna Roll it right. down. Roll it down. Yeah. Oh, he's on the green. He's on the green. That. Look. That was the ball. The ball was there once. <laughs> oh, God. What a game. Send it home. Send it. Oh. You okay? You finish off, I'll just pick mine. I'll take double. <laughs> <laughs> Been here before. Is that for six? Don't worry about it. Yeah? Don't worry about it. Oh. Oh my day. <laughs> Oh, good. Oh, you crack right on, mate. You crack right on. You roll that in. So now I've got to make it. Add a bit of drama and suspense. Yes. Oh, again as well. It's hoping you miss that. This for six. This is this is the half of the hole. Yeah, somehow. Come on. 
Ah, there. Oh, he means business. Oh, it's a serious, serious business now. <laughs> to give it a chance. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute bullet. Yeah, that's uh, that's two down. Tubes two up on the four hole challenge. Don't visualize my lifestyle. Life. Life. Don't visualize my drive. Life. Drive. Drive. Right. The wind with me. Send it, send, send it. it. Oh, I think that's all right down there. Sally, send. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was a full Sally, Sally to be sent. fair. Yeah, come on, come on, lads. Just go for an absolute big berth, and Aiden. Yeah, let's go. Let's have it. Send it. Let's have it. Send a clock. <laughs> Let's have it. Oh, oh it's, it's gone to the same it's spot. It's the same spot. It's just drawing now. Just drawing around to the left side of the fairway. So I think we've discovered, don't have to be Inspector Morse to work it out, Roberto Mancini is your worst manager, but who is your best? Oh, it's a good question. And to be fair to Roberto, when we say the worst, like, I understood his purpose. I just didn't like him as a human. Fair. Um, the best. <sighs> I would say I enjoy playing under Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank. Yeah. Like he was, uh, I wouldn't say he was the best technical or technical coach or whatever. Yeah. But just in the same way Mancini wasn't my type of guy, like Jimmy Floyd was. Right. And there was just something about him where we, we clicked. And I think he, I was captain at the time. He put a lot of responsibility onto, responsibility onto me and I enjoyed I enjoyed working under him and uh, it did help the fact that like, this is a guy I was watching on TV when I was younger and all that. Yeah. And I thought, oh, this are you quite star are you quite starstruck with like situations like that when a manager comes in you're like not, not fully to... not fully starstruck, but I appreciated who he was. Right. And I also appreciated well, conversely, he came in as a striker. he's obviously a striker, but when um, when he came in, he was very defensive minded, which was blowing my mind. He was defensive minded and upset and like really wanted to like wow. push down on fitness. Yeah. I was like, Jimmy, there's no way you would have ever been fit and concerned yourself with defending. <laughs> he didn't exactly put a shift in, did well, he? Well, exactly, yeah. But wow. as I say, his personality wise, I just I just really liked him. And I think most people who played under him, yeah, they felt like he was fair. Right. And I think as a footballer, having a coach who's fair goes a long, long way. Absolutely. And at QPR, you also played under Harry Redknapp. Yes. Now, every footballer I speak to who's played under Harry Redknapp has a Harry Redknapp story. Yes. Nadem. Yes. What's your Harry Redknapp story? Well, so I'll be honest, Harry Redknapp at QPR was different to Harry Redknapp at other places. Right. I don't think you really knew what he signed up for when he first came in. <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean? Because uh, we weren't great. <laughs> we, weren't, we weren't great. Like the atmosphere, the mood, everything, it was like, pfft, it was a little bit suspect. Yeah. And it was a tough task. So we, we, we went down that first season, but I think the main story really is when we were in the playoff final and you hear his words afterwards and he started saying I was thinking about which golf course he was going to be a member of when, we, when it was nil-nil, we were down to 10 men. I was like, it's a finish, Harry, it's nil-nil. And we ended up winning the game anyway, yeah. so we didn't need to do that. But if you want to talk about stories, I'll tell you about Ian Holloway. Right. So what, he's, he's good for a story. Day one of Ian Holloway as manager, we finish training, come inside, and we all have to sit around and watch Coach Carter for like two hours or however long it is. He says, this is what I'm like as a manager, so watch this and learn from it. <laughs> it was bizarre, but in the, I kind of got him in the end. Yeah. But like, it was weird to have everyone at the club sitting around watching Coach Carter at two o'clock in the afternoon after finishing training, people like dozing off like this. But yeah, that was um, that was a very interesting way to begin your tenure at a club. But like, weren't you just like, what is going on here? It's a, yeah, yeah, I was, I was, I was. But, you know, for so balance, like most managers when they come in, first thing they're saying, oh, you guys aren't fit enough, you're not this, you're not that. And they come in with a bit of a chip on the shoulder as such. But he didn't really bring that because you could see the club meant a lot to him. Yeah. And he wanted it to be successful. And he was trying to show that, you know, we're in this together. So, yes, it was incredibly different, yeah. to say the least. But 
it could have been a lot, lot worse. Because he was with Mark Bircham as well, who's a, yeah, who's exactly, a, yeah. who's another character. But the, the, the irony was, like, Birch looked quite level at times because Ian was so, was so nuts. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it was, it was, it, the club in that period was going through, like, a very significant transition. Yeah. And, you know, him being there, it's, I suppose it was good that someone came in who loved the, who loved the football club. Because, you know, that's essentially what the fans wanted to get behind. Absolutely. Right, where's our balls? Uh, yours will be down in on the right, probably. I've got you at... Oh, wow. It's a long way. I can't be real. Uh, 191. 191? Yeah, mate. Jeez. I know it's Is weird. Is this par four as well? Yeah, I know it's weird for you, like, not being on the fairway, but... <laughs> yeah, it's unfortunately where some people find themselves. I'm just going to go in my natural habitat over here looking for my golf. <laughs> Right, one nine one. Oh, wow! Well, that's a she rod one straight down the Bet Midler. <laughs> <laughs> oh. What oh, is going on here? I don't know what is going on here, Aidan. I really don't know what's going on oh, here. Oh, mate, I'm. <laughs> I've grown fatigued of watching you hit balls really well. <laughs> Nadim's had to drop, uh, so he's playing. Uh, this is three, yeah. Three. Come on. Come on, mate. Come on. Come on. Come on, Nadim. Come on, Nadim. <laughs> hit one down the fairway. Fairway? Go screens here, Paul. Oh. Oh. Oh, that's fine, actually. Right. Bounce back in. Yeah, that's fine. Fine, yeah. mate. That's the spot to be. You should know that. <laughs> Course forget, knowledge. Forget, yeah, forget the flag, mate. Course knowledge. And then Nadim, you, obviously you were at QPR. Yes. And then you went back, played against Man City. Yes. And it was the famous Aguero. <laughs> yeah. How yeah. weird was that for you? It was, it was very weird. And to be honest, that whole Aguero moment thing, we didn't really feel it on the pitch as such because no. say that you need to have watched the game back to know that that was a thing which was said. And for me, for the first like three, four days after the game finished, I wasn't watching TV because I was just in a state of shock about the stress of the situation. And like, I mean, I'll be honest, I didn't know who scored the goal. I promise you I didn't know who scored the goal. I just remember thinking we're going down. So I was a little bit, was a little bit stressed. Um, but to look back at it now, it's such, a, it's such an important game in Premier League history. Massive. And obviously we contributed, but for us, we stayed up. Yeah. But we stayed up because Gabriel Cissé scored in the last minute the week before against Stoke. Right. And all those were the three points which kept us up. Yeah. But you have to be part of that moment and see that for City and so on. It was great to say I was there, but I think a lot of the fans missed the point because as they did a pitch invasion, they run up to me saying, we've done it. I was like, yeah, we stayed up, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, oh, oh, sorry, yeah, I forgot you were not there anymore. <laughs> But yeah, it was. Uh, inside, you must have, it must have been such a complete mixture of emotions. It must have been like, oh no, we're going. Yes, we stayed up. Plus, all yeah. Our bases. It was more so for me. It was more so the side, the fact we stayed up. That right. was everything. Course, like, yeah, I, yeah. like I, I'd left, and I knew what those final weeks of the season were like for us at QPR. And it was very stressful. Yeah. And we stepped up in some big games, beating Arsenal, beating Spurs, I think, and stuff at home. So that's that was massive. Um, and then, as I say, the game finished. We've got massive sense of relief, and then to. I, was, I got invited over to the city dressing room and the difference between the two spots was in ours at QPR we had beers and theirs they had champagne and that kind of shuts, sums up the two feelings right. of like, you know, relief of one thing and the elation and the other. But I was hearing um, one of my old teammates was saying oh, I didn't want to celebrate mediocrity after we stayed up and finished in 17th and so on. And I want to be on record as countering that because one thing about QPR in that spell, there were some players in that team who in their careers never finished higher than 17th in the Premier League. Right. So when someone says it's mediocre to celebrate staying up in the Premier League, for some people that status means everything to them. And right. as a consequence, I think there is more value in, in that achievement than, than meets the eye. I think it's almost a point of privilege when people say otherwise. Yeah. And I think that misses the point. I think the more empathy you have, the more you understand. That obviously, you want to be playing for teams going for stuff. But as I say, a team that comes up from the Championship or comes that's been in League One, been higher, 17th and securing the status in the Premier League is huge. Well said, mate. Well said. Nadim's uh, over there. <laughs> I, think he's, I think he's lost interest. 
here we go. Take that. Alrighty then. <laughs> Time to bring out the short game again for everybody's uh, pleasure. Let's see, uh, see what we can muster here. And just keep, keep your eyes open, yeah? Got ya. I've got your back. Oh. Shot. Shot. Oh, what's that doing over there? Hold on. Have you kicked that? Yeah. Did you kick that? It is rapid. Nah, you've done something there. I'm not nah, having that. Mate, wouldn't do that to you, my friend. North Manchester Golf Club is double decent, but I tell you what, it's, it's tough. It's tough, isn't it? Yeah, well, well, some people, for some people it's tougher. Let's just say that. Massive holes are par fours. Right, come on. Oh, go on. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, miss me out. Oh. Miss me out. Miss me out, mate. Miss me out. Is that a gimme, gimme, gimme a man of the mid? No, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come on, come on. Oh. That's oh. Not to, it's not supposed to go that way. It's not supposed to go that oh. way. Is that it? Yes, the stream one, mate. Congratulations, you came up north and you dominated. Well, can we play the last hole? Yeah, go on. <laughs> well, I've won, but... Yeah, good I'm for you. so much fun, we've got to play again. I can't believe I've won. Come on. Oh my god. Coming back in again. <laughs> I'm not even going to swear. I wanted to, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to accept it. I'm going to get better as a human being and not be critical of people who are bandits. <laughs> He's calling me a bandit now. He's he banded me off. <laughs> I've grown tired of this. <laughs> I'm tired of I've this. I've grown tired of your shenanigans. Oh, wow. Smoke that one, huh? Will the real Nader Manua please stand up? Listen, when you've got nothing to play for, you can kick on, can't you? That's when I perform at my best, when Absolute I've already lost. Absolute duba. The Southern Bomber's arrived. <laughs> the Southern Bomber. <laughs> Nader's just given me a new nickname, the Southern, Southern the Bomber. Southern Bomber. I want to say that's Bomber. Yeah, yeah. Southern Bomber Bandit, let's just call him that. <laughs> Southern Bomber Bandit. Yeah, yeah, so I tend to shoot in the 70s, but my handicap's about 16, so. I love the yeah, fact yeah, that every yeah. time you're doing yeah, a yeah, session, yeah. you go really pot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, it's because you're from the South, aren't you? So oh, that's yeah, the way yeah. you got to do it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, if I, if I start throwing the Mancunian lingo on you, you'd be baffled, so there's no <laughs> point. There's no point trying. Uh, who's the funniest uh, player you've come across in your career? Because you play with some proper characters, haven't you? Um, do you know, there have been, been quite a few, but in terms of like blatant, constant um, humour, I'd probably say Ben Thatcher. It, it was very hard to find him in a serious moment really? when, I was, when I was at City, yeah. Some of the stuff he was doing, like, uh, it's a little bit suspect. Uh, but you can, anything goes on this channel, Nadem. Well, you may or may not have uh, deposited some faecal matter in a shoebox or two and hidden it in the uh, dressing room. And people would kind of not know it's around, but you could always smell something. <laughs> and it'd take a while to find the kit around Les Chapman. Wasn't necessarily happy with it. But you know, obviously that's weird. But then the thing that I think is more weird is like, just picture a man squatting into a box to have a thing. <laughs> but, yeah, that's the, uh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, oh, it's in a box. But like, you're thinking, well, how did he get into the box? But yeah, yes, I'd say him. He was, uh, during his playing days, he was certainly uh, entertaining to say the least. Just the, the, the dedication to get a shoe box. Pop, that, like, that's, who pop, thinks of that? Who pop, thinks of pop that? Pop one out. Who, who thinks of that? It's just, yes. Yeah, it's, it's not normal. <laughs> That's, that's not a normal thought. 
Uh, he's the only person I've ever seen think of that. <laughs> what, did, ever, did, he, did he sort of come and tell you as well? Like, no, you just, you just, you just, you'd be like, can you smell that? I've been smelling that for a week or so. What is that? <laughs> you just leave it. <laughs> you, just, you just leave it. You just leave it somewhere. <laughs> and then once it smells in there, you're like, All right, okay. Smells like there's a poo. <laughs> <laughs> Not a Scooby where I'm going here, but par five, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Just go for that cloud on there. Right. Little seven iron. Best thing to do is just go for the trees. For the trees. Yeah. Straight into the trees is a is a shout. Yeah. Oh, there you go, there's the hook. No, I'm sure that'll be fine. There's the captain hook. I'm sure that'll be fine. All right then, all right, all right, all right, all right. Here we are, aiming at nothing in particular. <laughs> all right, all right. All right. All right. Do your sudden impression again. <laughs> I can't geese. <laughs> can't geese her. <laughs> right. Oh, well, it's still to the left with you. Geese her. Sipping that geese. You see the way it just penetrates through the sky, geese? <laughs> How was it, geese her? <laughs> Straight left. <laughs> Places to be, mate. <laughs> We got the right side of the course on the fairway. Absolute geyser. The lady <laughs> manoeuvre. Southern accent. Sweet as a nut. What have we got, sir? A 140. 140. Wind against. Yeah. <laughs> That's a cold wind as well. I'm thinking driver off the deck. <laughs> what do you reckon? Sevens? Yeah, it could be, to be fair. Actually, uh, you could, to be fair, you keep quite low, don't you? I like an eight for you, but if you want to hit seven, go nuts. I mean, the wind is absolutely... Yeah. Right. Yes, yeah, kick right on. There we go, let's just draw it back in. Seen this before. Seen this before. Shot. <laughs> oh, wowzers. Oh, sick of tired of this. nation of domination. Never does it stop. Right, come on, Aidan. This, is, this has to be it. Come on. This has to be it. So give the people what they want. This has to be it. This is it. And that was a shank. But it went forward. Shanky de Tori. Oh, that is oh, that is a slab there. It's very impressive. Not everyone can do that, you know. So, Naden, this is the final question on the four-hole challenge. The question I ask everyone. Yes. Um, if you could have a caddy, anyone in the world, past or present, from any walk of life, to be your caddy for the day, hmm. who would it be and why? Um, you know, I think for this caddy situation, I'd like to be someone who's actually understanding of what golf is. Yeah. So we could talk about, say, just found famous people and so on and so forth. But for me, this game of golf, the only reason I'm playing is because of Tiger Woods. Yeah. Like Tiger Woods defined the game itself. And to spend any time, I'd, I'd happily throw three quarters of my friend base under the bus to get to Tiger Woods. <laughs> so I'd say to spend some time with him. Yeah. And walk around with him and try and act like I wasn't starstruck. I think that'd be my that'd be my thing. He's an absolute legend, isn't he? Yeah, I'd just love to spend time with him because there's certain people who walk the earth and they just feel of just having all around them. Yeah. I think to walk a golf course with Tiger, it's probably one of the best. It'd be the absolute do. nuts, wouldn't it? Hmm. Tiger, I know you're watching. Get well soon. Come on, Aiden. Par. Uh, par. Is this it's par five, isn't it? Yeah, par five. Is this three? Chip, yes. Oh, it's chip oh you think I'm gonna you think don't think I'm gonna get it in? All oh right. <laughs> not bad. <laughs> oh. You deserve to be punished for that, but I don't know if I'm gonna provide it. Well, I mean let's be honest here. Do you honestly think you're gonna get this in? Let's be honest, you were twitching for a second there. <laughs> let's be honest. You were, you were squeaky <laughs> bomb time for sure. you, mate. Oh, he's tracking, he's tracking, oh, he's tracking, 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 he's trac
<laughs> that was nearly a Oh. Hey! Ray Parler, get in. You're, uh, come you, on. You've impressed me today. Thank you. I, I've, I've, I've surprised myself. To be honest, you've not goes. actually made any putts. I keep giving them to you, but you know, when, when, when I'm really like two balls deep per, per hole, it kind of speaks for itself, doesn't it? Come on, mate. This is it, just roll it in. Give the people what they want. Give the people what they want. Oh. They didn't want that. They didn't want that. I didn't want that. The people no. didn't want that, but the people yeah. wanted the four-hole challenge with Nader Manure. That was the four-hole challenge with Nader Manure. Don't Absolute ledge, mate. Thank you so much. Thanks. Please like and subscribe. We love it, don't we? Yes, sir. Don't Hold forget back. to ring the bell. Don't ring forget to ring the bell <laughs> down there. Down there. Mm. See you in the comments. <laughs>